So a few people have commented on the master clip video um, saying it's a little bit fast and they're also not entirely sure what the point of it is. So I thought I'd make a sort of more um, straightforward video to show why it has a, a really good place in your edit flow. So let's imagine that you've filmed an interview and this is your mid shot close and sort of cut footage to intersperse throughout the interview. And you drag your main camera clip on here and you decide to give it a look. So you go to your effects and then you look for Lumetri and there it is. And your client says to you, I would like everything to be orange. So you do that and you think, great job done. And then you go through the footage and of course there's always bits that need taking out. So we're going to take out a bit here. For this, remember C, the letter C and B are your friends in terms of getting rid of stuff. So there you go. And you look through and you think, excellent, it's orange and I've got rid of the rubbish. So all is well. And then your client calls you up and says, actually, I'd really like it blue. That's where it is. Blue is the new orange. So you change that to blue. But then, of course, you go to the other clips and they're still orange. And the reason for that is a fundamental difference between here and there. Here is your original Sills files off your camera. They stay intact. They never change. Nothing ever happens to them. Here you can see this is all clip one. We've actually chopped it now into four separate sections and that creates four separate instances of Lumetri, all independent of each other. So you can see that it's now actually quite a big job to do a simple color change for a client. So let's show it a better way first. So we'll delete the metry off these clips. And what we'll do is what a lot of people do, which is a good technique, is you do a new item and then you do an adjustment layer. You say OK, and then you drag the adjustment layer on top of the video and make it as long as the video. Then go to your uh, effects again and drag Lumetri this time onto the adjustment layer, not onto the footage. Now remember your client says blue is the new orange, so we make it blue, and as you go through, everything is fine. So it would seem like you fixed the problem. First thing to remember, adjustment layers work from the top down. So if we now introduce another bit of footage, which is your close, your clip two. So now you can see that, brilliant, it's doing exactly what it should do. Now that's assuming you live in a world where the lighting was the same, the cameras are the same, the cameras see, see skin tones in the same way, uh, the white balance point was set correctly, um, there's nothing blown out, there's nothing crushed in the blacks. That's assuming everything matches up perfectly. The adjustment layer is definitely the way to go. But you know that every camera is different and Blackmagic has radically different skin tones to Panasonic, which has radically different skin tones to Canon, etc. And so there's always separate adjustment. Now, now that you know the adjustment layer works from the top down, it makes sense that if I drag this one above, this is now not receiving any of the treatment there. So you might think, OK, well, then I just do another adjustment layer and then that will just affect that one. But of course, it's the top down, which means that this one will also affect everything underneath. So you can see it's now converted the other ones to grey. If I take that off, you can see they're blue. So that wouldn't work. So one technique is then to grab all these parts here that you want affected by the top adjustment layer, right click and then nest them. And this in effect gives them their own timeline. So now you can see you've got the two different colors, no problem. The downside, it means you've got to click through to here to do any editing to these. So it makes it that much harder really to do straightforward editing. So. I'm going to delete that and delete the adjustment layer and let's consider a good workflow for when you've got your interview footage back and it's in the bin here. You now know that obviously these are single clips. You've got one clip here, one and one. They're all distinct. They're not going to change. They're not going to get chopped up. 
this is non-destructive editing on the timeline. So wouldn't it be nice if Lumetri could be applied directly to this clip? Because then when you drag it on here, you could chop it into any number of pieces and it wouldn't matter because all you'd then have to do is control the instance of Lumetri attached to this single clip, which means there's only one instance of Lumetri. And of course, Adobe does do that. So if we double click on this source clip, you can see the source there and you can also see master clip here. If you click on here, on the actual clip on the timeline, it's automatically gone to clip, which is this bit, but it's also got master clip, which is this bit. So it makes sense, therefore, to go to effects and to put Lumetri onto the master clip. Now you don't drag it onto the timeline, because that is the clip. You drag it up to the master clip here. So now let's change this to an obvious color change and you will see that it's completely carried all the way throughout. You can also see that if I go to master clip here, it doesn't matter where I am on the timeline. If I change it here, it's all gonna change throughout. So I would put it to you that the reason for the master clip is that when you get your footage back, and often you have, say, Sony, Panasonic, Blackmagic, whatever, all different footage, maybe taken in a different variety of places. So some in daylight, some in fluorescent, some in, you know, uh, very dark situations, stuff like that. You'll want to treat them all differently. You won't want to apply the same color correction necessarily. So how about you go through these first, you get a baseline correction on them, and then when you drag them from here onto here, you know they're correct. So with mine, uh, for example, the uh, Panasonic footage, I'll drag a LUT on them to convert from V-Log, and then I'll check the whites aren't out of range, the blacks aren't crushed, I'll make sure the skin tones are absolutely on target. And I do all of that first in here using the master clip, which means when I then drag them onto this timeline, I know that every part of that, no matter how chopped up, will have correct skin tones, will have correct everything, basically. Um, and that gives me a really good base to start with. What I don't tend to do is I don't tend to impose a look in the master clip, because as you can see here, you've got three clips, which means you'll also have three separate instances of Lumetri down here. But consider this, if you get that one absolutely conforming to Rec. 709, that one to Rec. 709, that to Rec. 709, and make sure that all the skin tones are bang on and they match as closely as possible, then what you can do is drag them onto the timeline as you would normally, knowing that they contain all the new information about how they should look. But then your adjustment layer comes into play and you can put that on the top and then you could use uh, like a film emulation package, such as Film Convert. And you can use that to impose a general look over the project in whichever way you think would be right. So the process for me would have been for this to go to your bin, go to your source footage, on the master clip, get your levels right, get your white levels right, get your black levels right, get your skin tones right, and the color balance. Basic stuff, not, not an actual grade, more like a corrective process. Get all that done, get it done on all three, then drag them onto the main timeline, and then once you've got that all in place, then put your adjustment layer on to allow a control over the overall look of all those separate clips. So it's almost like a hierarchy. You've got your master clips right at the top. They set sort of like your global parameters for each separate clip in your bin. And then on your timeline, you've then got individual control if you want it over every single edited bit, every little edit bit. Or you can impose an adjustment layer across the whole top of the video or across all the layers to then give it a look and feel for whatever you want. And I've used this um, in all sorts of um, productions from sort of artsy kind of films where 
it's been really nice to know that all the footage complies underneath, but then I can then adjust a grain um, and a saturation and various other things that suit the mood of the overall film. Establish your baseline with all the different cameras under the master clip, put them on the timeline, do your edit, and then use the adjustment layer to impose the look, and it just becomes a whole load easier to create something that looks like it was meant to look the way it looks, if you like. So I hope this has made sense um, and hopefully it's put to sleep some of the arguments with the previous video.